Okay, so we've discussed the uh, shell model in atoms for electrons, where we had a Coulomb uh, potential from a central well, and we could describe the electrons within that potential. Uh, to describe the nucleus, uh, we don't have any central uh, subnucleus to describe, uh, so we would rather like uh, rather use a, just an average potential uh, without such a um, concentrated shape as the, with a nucleus. Uh, we'll still assume that the uh, spherical symmetry holds, but uh, we'll take uh, that the uh, potential energy that any nucleon feels uh, will be the result of, you know, the average of all the other nucleons there. Uh, and this is difficult to do analytically, but we can still get qualitative features uh, from um, solving a system that we can do an analytic solution for. And so the first one we're going to consider is the infinite square well in spherical symmetry. So in this uh, potential, then we will use the potential uh, V of R equals zero when R is less than some uh, value of capital R and it's infinite when R is greater than or equal to a capital R. Uh, with this uh, potential in uh, the Schrodinger equation that we had before, we can write down the radial part of that, uh, still have the angular momentum, uh, the angular part still give you a spherical harmonics, but the radial part with this becomes uh, d squared unl. We're still going to have uh, two quantum numbers. We still have three. We still have m. Uh, d squared u by dr squared uh, minus l, l plus 1 over r squared u and l. Uh, there's no v term because v is 0 where we're solving it. Uh, so and that equals minus 2 m over h bar squared e n l uh, times u n l. So uh, the solutions to this equation are the spherical Bessel functions uh, which we usually call, call J sub L and uh, they have a number that they they go with but we're going to say K and L times that times R. So the spherical Bessel functions come for each solution to this equation with a particular value of L, you get a particular uh, Bessel function solution. Uh, and then we can scale the variable by a certain amount. Now, with our infinite square well potential, uh, we have a potential that looks like this. Uh, and because it goes to infinity, the, uh, the wave function has to go to zero here, and it has to be zero outside. Uh, as well, and that means that we can only take values of this equation that go to zero when uh, the solutions, the quantization comes because only values of uh, K and L where K and L times capital R equals zero in the fun gives a zero of the function are allowed. So I've made a picture here of the first several uh, spherical Bessel functions. So J0 looks like this. It starts with a maximum at zero, uh, at one. It has a, a value at R equals zero of one, and then it oscillates and goes slowly to zero. Uh, J1 looks like this. J2 looks like this. J3 looks like that. We can actually write down uh, a few of these. It's useful to note for later. Uh, so J 0 of x is sine x over x. 
j1 of x is sine x over x squared minus cosine x over x j2 of x is 3 over x squared minus 1 over x times sine x minus 3 over x squared cosine x. Uh, and if you work those out, then uh, you'll see that you know so if you put in x equals 0 here, uh, you'll have 0 over 0, but uh, the limit that x goes to 0 goes to a constant, uh, whereas at higher orders, uh, you'll, you'll get 0 there. But notice j1 has this linear behavior at 0. Uh, j2 has this quadratic behavior uh, close to 0, and likewise. The fact that the, the values that we want will all have, uh, we'll use different constants here to get them to equal 0, means that if we set uh, capital R equal to 1, in this case, we have to pick only those values of the 0 to fit this in to there. So uh, I've picked the zeros here so that, for instance, the first zero of, of j1 is set, so the scaling value is just uh, goes to zero at one. Notice that's easy to find out in this case because uh, this will go to j0 goes to zero whenever sine is zero, so at n pi. So the k01 will be just one pi, and so we take r over pi, and it goes to zero at one. So, uh, and then if we uh, have the second zero at two pi, we have this uh, line here has goes through the first zero, comes back up, and at the second zero, it's one. So we'll cross zero here at one half, obviously. Uh, and then the third zero of j, uh, the third zero, third root of j zero is given by this function goes up, uh, goes through here, through there, and comes to zero there. Uh, and then I've drawn j1 and j2 and j3 all normalized in that way. Um, so uh, then going to the energy levels of these, uh, we can calculate from the zero uh, the energy level. And uh, it turns out that we'll have this root factor, k, and L is going to be the square root of 2m over h bar squared times E and L. It's the result of solving the eigenvalue equation on the previous page that I had, or uh, turning this around, the energy uh, of a given NL state is just uh, h bar squared over 2m KNL squared. So plugging those energies in, uh, I plotted a lot of the energy levels for all the uh, states up to uh, L equals 3 uh, and the first three roots of that, uh, but then I zoomed in on the energy levels uh, below 10 uh, normalized by the E10 uh, state, and I wrote it backwards because uh, anyway, so, uh, so that state here is 1, that's its energy level with the dotted line. Uh, and then I just added that. So here's the actual wave function shifted up by 1. So it goes from 1, goes down, it's 0, it's 0, but the energy level is 1. Likewise, uh, the energy. And so then uh, if you go to the second one, uh, it's squared. So E0, uh, 2, N equals 2, L equals 0 is here. L equals 0. Uh, n equals 3 is there. Uh, then, likewise, if you have L equals 1, uh, you have this state. You see that its energy is about twice. Uh, and if you have L equals 2, you'll have an energy that's a little more than 3. Uh, and so you have the energy levels filling up like this. Now, coming back to the uh, shell model, we should remember that for every L, uh, 
in one of these states, we can put 2L plus 1 uh, particles, right? So we have uh, 2L plus 1 states, uh, M states, and then we have to multiply by that by 2 to take into account uh, the electron pairs, uh, and so M and S states uh, for each L. So if we count these states, then uh, for the first lowest energy state as we fill up, that's L equals 0. And so we're going to have 2 for that. If we go to the next highest energy uh, level there, uh, that has n equals 2. Uh, it's the second root. But L still equals, uh, but L is 1 now. Uh, so and so there's going to be uh, two two times l equals one four five uh, excuse me two uh, times one is two plus one is three times two is six states for that so we're going to have six here so for counting shells then we have two and then uh, we add to that six. Uh, so we have 2, and then we have 2 plus 6 equals 8. So you see we've uh, found the first two magic numbers, uh, the 2 and the 8. Uh, as we go on, though, the next level is uh, L equals 3, uh, L equals 2, excuse me, and it will have uh, then 10 states. Uh, and so you might think we have uh, 2 plus 6 plus 8 uh, plus, excuse me, 10 equals 18 states, but uh, the next magic number, in fact, was uh, 20, and so it doesn't quite work uh, to give us the levels that uh, we would expect. Uh, I will note that if we go to all the way out to j equals 3, uh, you're going to have 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 14, plus 18, which equals 50. So you could, out of this scheme, get a shell with 50, all taking uh, the n equals 1, but L from 0 to 3, uh, 0 to 4 states to get another of the magic number shells. So the qualitatively, the spherical infinite square well can account for uh, some of the magic uh, numbers in nuclear shells, but not all of them.